Hey, Esther. So we are doing a, something a little bit different today. We are going to be reading the Bible and figuring out what going for the gold really means. So here I have the power of a praying teen, which I love. And so, so God has golds and diamonds everywhere in his word, but we must dig them out. And just like all precious gems and metals, when they are first pulled out of the ground, the treasures you find in God's word need to be polished and refined in order to have the beauty and brilliance they are capable of revealing. Every time you go over one of God's promises in your heart, it will become more refined and polished in you and shine more brightly in your soul. So one thing I can, one example I can say is this one verse is this one verse that uh like it's the the most popular verse in the bible i guess because i've seen it everywhere uh john three sixteen. it's for god so loved the world that he gave his own one and only son that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life and will not perish john three sixteen. So I've just been, all through my life, that's the one verse that just kind of always standed out to me until I just memorized it, as you can tell by that. And one of the most precious gems you'll find in the Word is God's voice. He speaks through us, to us through the, His Word as we read it or hear it. In fact, we can really learn to recognize God's Word to our soul if we are not hearing him speak to us first in his word. The more you hear his voice in the word, the easier it will be to recognize him speaking to your heart when you are out in the world. The more you can discern God's voice, the less chance there will be that you will accept any kind of counterfeit. So like, that kind of means you'll be able to know what's right from wrong, will be able to know what God wants you to do versus what you want to do. So, let's say you really like this this town, your hometown, but you, like, I don't know, you've just been reading the Bible and somehow God has been calling you out to this other town. I don't know, like, let's say Atlanta, Georgia or New York, or I don't, <laughs> yeah, or Vancouver, or some some town, and you really don't want to go because all your family and friends are here, and so you kind of really have to go through God's Word. You really have to understand it. You need to know it, which is why it's so important. And it can help you out, too. If you don't know how to pray, then that's why you have this. Yeah. God's word straightens out our mind and soul and helps us to think clearly about things. It leads us away from self-destructive thoughts and enables us to enjoy a sense of well-being. It gives us hope and keeps us on course. It provides with a solid us with a solid foundation upon which to build a life that God has planned for us. God looks forward to meeting you in his word every day and he wants you to feel the same way. There is no way to draw close to God or to have a clean and right heart or to be a forgiving person or do what's right or stand against the enemy or take the control unless you have the word. There's no way. Even if it's only to read a verse or two or take a verse and say it over and over to get it into your mind and your heart. For example, if I were to take the verse, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me, Philipp Philippians 4.13, and say it over and over throughout the day. It will, it will powerfully affect your life that day. The thing about this verse, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me, is that you can do all things as long as it's what God wants you to do. And then he will strengthen you. If you're doing something that you kind of know God doesn't want you to do, 
and you know it's not right, then how is gonna how is God gonna help you with that? You need to be sure what you're doing is what God wants you to do. Otherwise then what's the point? So God's word is kind of like a compass in your guide. You can't go where you need to go without it. That's that's kind of what it is. You can't go anywhere without it. So, I don't know. I have a lot of bookmarks here because I love reading it. And whenever I like think something's important, I just sort of save it. Like, for example, Romans 5. This is what I thought was important. Romans 5.12. This is what happened. Sin came into the world by one man. Sin brought death with it. Death spread to all men because all have sinned. So because of sin, that's why people die. Because of sin. And and that's um, that. It was just like something I thought of. Sin causes people to die. In heaven, there is no sin, and therefore no. And therefore, I think, no one can die. There is no sin. Yeah, so <laughs> that's what, um, that's what really standed out to me today. So I hope you enjoyed, and bye.